Good morning, welcome to Felix Doe TV, Gainsborough Studio. I'm almost inclined to say, good morning Vietnam, in memory of that amazing comedian who sadly we lost this week. Uh, we've got Eric, we've got This Is Your Life, the continuing, ongoing events of. And you brought something in, you haven't got Bella this morning, have you? No, for the first time. I've done 22 episodes yeah. of my life so far. This is the 23rd, I think. Is it really? And this is the very first one I haven't got Bella. No. And the reason I haven't got Bella is because I'm rushing off after this right. straight on the train to London. Oh, right. And, but what I've got instead is another pet of mine, and that is original Norfolk Punch, a bottle of it. That looks good, doesn't now, it? Now, this, I think, ought to, people ought to realise how marvellous this product is. Absolutely. Because it was, number one, it was the first herbal drink. Now yeah. there's hundreds and hundreds of imi imitations. Mm. IDV, who eventually bought this, Britvic owns it at the moment. Do they? Right. Well, I believe. But um, IDV put on the market Purdy's and Aqualiba, which are herbal drinks, yes. which are both brilliant drinks, but yeah. copies, if you we, know Well, we touched on drinks. that last week. We yeah. did, mm. yes. But I'm going to repeat one or two little things, yeah. because here I've got a bottle of Norfolk Yeah, it looks, actually, it looks but, lovely. I like but this today, cup. people don't seem to have so much motivation. No. Now, this was an old medieval recipe which I found. I mm. think I've told this story, yes. but it's worth repeating. Mm. And I found it amongst the deeds of Well Manor. Mm. And um, because in those days you used to have boxes of deeds. We said check and your now deeds, didn't we? Now check we just your check the, the yeah. website for the uh. registration certificate from, <laughs> but la from the land registry. Yeah. But in those days you had it. And I found the recipe amongst that. Right. It was a Tudor copy of a medieval recipe. We started making it in the kitchen sink, mm. and it, it went in three years from the kitchen sink to a national product, and we were making a million bottles a year, and providing employing 60 employment. people, 60 yep. people Re employment, yeah. and then to be bought out by and copied by the biggest drink manufacturer yeah. in the world. So it's quite an achievement. Very, well, very flattering, isn't it? But seeing the bottle brings back memories to me. I bet. Because... Um, it shows you how you can overcome all obstacles. Oh, right. Problems always got an answer, and you've mm. got to find them. You see, when I first made it, it was made to the medieval recipe, mm. and the monks claimed that it contained over 30 herbs and spices, and that it cured everything from the <laughs> ague downwards, you I know, from the it. plague downwards. <laughs> but, of course, the uh, regulations, you can't make claims... No, and, I suppose And also, you can't. there was a question of VAT, and all... You know, I did. Oh, yeah. But I... I disputed it and I think you've got to plug away mm. and I ended up going down to London to the um, I put Let that me have a little look at that yes. I went down to London and to the ministry and in the end we agreed of a form formulation of words and oh, that right. was that um, this was the original recipe made by the monks with uh, containing 30 herbs and spices right the monks claimed <laughs> The monks yep, claimed, back there, and you can't the monks those. claimed yeah. that it cured everything from the plague downwards. Oh, I like but that. But today we make no claims. We just say to warm, relax, and cheer you. And right. that was on the label, yeah. so so that the people knew what the monks claimed and what the herbs did. And I think that was one of the reasons for its popularity. I also think it's a it's a very well packaged and identified product. I mean, the thirty herbs, and there's a. Hopefully, we can put a sort of a copy of the bottle. In, in on the well, actual program. It is, because now, it is now coming back to England. Oh, good. And um, it's being distributed. It's already been delivered to Sandringham. You can buy it in the gift shop at Sandringham. Oh, good. And w we believe Her Majesty enjoys it as well. I'm glad and, that she um, might. Great and it's coming box. back. And people are greeting it like an old friend. Because and so they should. Obviously, um, the big manufacturers, they like their own products. Yeah. Herds in Equilibria are still going strong, but they don't contain all these med medicinal herbs in it. Yeah. And you, you see, I'm a bit disappointed. Why is that? Because when you when this was presented on the BBC Home Service, yes, you made it warm and you presented the interviewer with a hot. Oh, I see. <laughs> and what have we got? We just got the bottle. Oh dear. So drink it oh by dear. the neck. So <laughs> at some point we will have a, 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 a hot, on air hot, a hot tasting. Hot. Now, Let it, us get it, back it, to your yes. Enough because yesterday I had a phone call from America. Did you? From a Stephen Rosenberg. Oh yes, 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 yes. And what was interesting? He raised two points. Yes, he did. Number one was of course the Norfolk Punch because he he yes. came over. This was in nineteen eight in the nineteen eighties. Right. And he he came over to see me. 
because he wanted it for America. Mm. And I used to supply him, and he used to sell it in all the bus um, depots in what, America. What, Greyhound bus taxi? Greyhound oh, depots right. in America. Then, of course, we got a much bigger distributor. Yes. And we used to send out great big container loads of, of Norfolk Punch to America. Right. And, um, but to get the story in the right order, this big distributor, they had some big celebrity, I can't remember, a star, a well-known star. Right. They brought her over to England, right. and they brought her to Well Manor, <laughs> and we did a film of her, you know, looking at the poppies and looking at the oh, drinks right. and, and what's it. You haven't got and, a copy of it. Oh, we have got a copy somewhere. Oh, we, we should put, put it, it on, together, yes. yeah. But just another lesson that can be learned, mm. and that is, of course, that... I warned them. I said, well, don't put that out until, until you've you got, yeah. got the stocks in America. Yeah, it's and they, else. of course, put it out. Millions of inquiries, and they couldn't supply them. Oh, no So they, they, they lost, they didn't lose the market, but it they, did, they damaged it. it. They damaged yeah. it because yeah. of that. But it shows you, if you're going to do publicity, make sure the goods are there before yeah, you do the publicity. True. Actually, uh, dear viewer, I had a word with young Stephen Rosenberg yes, after, right. and he currently is... Um, at the New York version of Oldborough and Southwold, isn't he? He's yes, at, that, he's at the Hamp uh, Hamp Hamptons, just up the coast, which oh, is yeah. very upmarket, very yeah. um, whatever, whatever. But that's that's where he was. And he said that on his visitation to you, he had quite a life-changing experience, almost a road to Damascus yes, experience. Really, yes, yes. That was concerning a bird and a chain. And now, I don't, now and, I don't and, remember this. No, I'm just thinking because at that time it was a bit like the 60s. If you remember it, you couldn't have been there. But um, <laughs> it certainly had a major impact on yeah. Stephen. So I think it's something... Um, I did suggest to him that at some point when we're in a position we should do a transatlantic chat. I think that would chat. be a good idea. But what was interesting, mm. and it brings it back to me, he, he, he said he had some sort of, uh, he's now like a, does meditations, he's a healer, he's a healer. Yeah. and he said he got that when he came That's to Well right. Manor. And, this and of course was Well Manor of was on a ley line. All right. Now I'm a great believer in ley lines. Which and, are what? Well, this is a power force which uh, they discovered it originally in medieval days, right. and they found that all the major cathedrals were all in a direct line. And so they investigated it, and they found there were these power um, lines, and they were able to actually plot them. And How? Magnetically? Well, electric? I don't know. It, no. It's one of these spiritual things more. Oh, it's, is it? It's some sort of force. And it's in lines. Now, they're called oh, right. ley lines, L-E-Y. Yeah. Google it. I haven't Googled it myself. No. But if you Google it, no, I'm well, sure perhaps, you'll find a lot of information about it. But if I can continue, otherwise yeah, you'll yeah. take my mind Absolutely. off what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It was on a ley line, mm. and apparently people who live on a ley line, they always gravitate to other ley lines oh, right. for some reason or other. There's some yeah. force. Now, Stephen in America, he, yes, he claims he got all his forces from this power in this ley line. Really? Now, what is interesting, and this is what I was coming to, right. is that, of course, the Roman roads, for some reason or other, also seem to follow the ley lines. Now, the Romans, as you know, their roads were dead straight. Oh, they weren't like ours today, oh. meandering all over the place. No, no, it was they used to take a line. If they were going from London, from Dover to London. Straight line. There was a dead yep. straight line. Now, yeah. I think people even now today have difficulty knowing how they did it. But some people say that the Roman roads were also along ley lines. Oh, right. Now, what is interesting is that Felixstowe oh, yes. is on the site of an old Roman road. It is, yes, so it is. So I've got strong suspicions that Felixstowe is on a ley line. You're actually right at the bottom of it. We're absolutely, where, you live. where I live. Yeah. And what they say is that people, as I said earlier, yeah. people who have lived on a ley line Go always on. gravitate back to ley lines. Well, I think this, this deserves serious investigation. Serious investigation. And we'll find somebody so to do. Right. Now, um, one thing we missed on your departure from the hall was what happened to the doves. Oh, yes. Because, of course, as you know, IDV, because they had started at Purges and Aquilib Aqua yep. Libra, they wanted the original and they wanted all to do with it. So they yes. came and they made me an offer for, right. for, for, it was a very considerable offer, I might say, because right. it included the factory, the well manor. Oh, the whole shebang. The whole shebang. They wanted to have the whole caboose. Yes, and your dearly beloved uh, supported the view. My, my dearly beloved 
she said to me, because I started Norfolk Punch after I'd retired. I know. So, of course, you know, uh, and she'd been against it and she watched it growing, taking over her yeah. lives. Yeah. And um, she always supported it, needless to say. But when this IDV came along with the offer, yeah. I wasn't enthusiastic to sell it. But she said, no, she said, it's either me or Norfolk Punch. Why? So, well, there was no, no, no dispute over no. that. I sold Norfolk Punch to IDV. But when you come back to the dubs, I yeah. had bought six dubs originally yeah. when we first went to Well Manor. And those six dubs multiplied into a couple of thousand. Oh, dear. And th th I was very <laughs> fond of those. I used to feed them morning and night. Right. They used to fly around my head when we, I went uh. out. And they were quite a feature of the place. Yeah. Now, of course, when IDV bought the place, they completed the transaction. They gave me, I can't remember, a month to get, yeah. get myself moved out of it. Right. And I was, tr one of the biggest tragedies in my life, it's a silly mm. thing to say, really, a tragedy. <laughs> yeah. But um, I went out one morning, I heard gunfire in the, in the uh, grounds. Right. I went out. And there was there was our builder, you know, man right. we, we with, with with a shotgun shooting my doves. Really? I couldn't believe my eyes. You I went to buy your leave. I went out there and I said, I'm sorry. When yeah. when I've gone, IDV must do what they like with the property. But while I'm here, you're not going to kill no. my d pets. They're yeah. really my pets. It's like seeing somebody coming out and yeah. find them shooting your pet dog or your yeah. pet cat. Dear to me, me, those doves, they used to know me. They used to come on my yeah. hand. And, you yeah. know, it, it was really a tragedy. But fortunately, we took all our other livestock with yeah. us. We had peacocks. Right. So we took our peacocks with us. But it all happened rather suddenly. Mm. And um, so what I did, we obviously started looking around for um, where we were going yeah. to go. And I thought, well, now, you know, money was no object, obviously. Mm. So yeah. I thought, let's find something which will suit us. Which right. Would be nice. And I wanted somewhere which was, uh, you know, a very old property, uh, somewhere which was Another a nice one to surroundings. Do up again. Yeah. And um, I, saw, I saw this place, uh, um, Bridge Farm and Hermitage Hall, up for sale. Right. And I went up there, and I went up this drive, a huge, long drive. Right. With huge trees all the way down, so impressive. And I came up it, and there was this, uh, you know, this old, mm. old buildings, and... Um, I fell in love with it straight away. Good man. And of course, once again, I think there's always a plan in everything. If you've read my book, The Photo yeah, Theory, sure, sure, sure. you'll know that there's a plan for We'd everything. We'd better discuss that again. Yeah, but don't take days. my mind off no, what I'm talking about. Mm. Um, so uh, I looked at these old buildings, and they, I found that they were old buildings that had been converted. Oh, right. And there were 17 of them, and they were being used as farm buildings. Right. But I suddenly realized that and did investigations, and I found that it was a, there'd been a house there all for centuries, uh -huh. and that it was the site of a old chapel which the pilgrims used to use on their way to Walsingham. Oh, right. Or some other shrine. I think it was Walsingham. Uh, it probably was, yes. But, um, Very uh, they were a, a day's walk apart, apparently, That's right. and this mm. one was on the river, so we had a mild frontage to the River Ouse, Did which was really? wonderful. Yes. And it was 250 acres, so we surrounded with woods and we had deer in the... It was absolutely ideal. All as a result of this... All as a result of this, Norf this, you know, this, Norfolk Punch. This wonderful... That's right. So check your deeds. So, so um, she so mustn't distract no, crack me because I'm, I'm in the middle of... Yes. The, you're uh, there. Old age, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> to distract crack me. Crack on with I the, the 17 um, buildings. Yeah, mm. and so, and I found too, the other interesting, well, what I did was, first of all, taking the chapel, mm. um, we we converted it back to a chapel. Right. And we made this beautiful chapel there, and um, I got in touch with the Bishop of Norwich, mm. and uh, he came over and saw it, and um, to cut a long story short, uh, he, he uh, I don't know what he did, but we were Roman Catholics, and we had the Blessed Sacrament uh, there we're allowed to have it there so we reinstated it uh, reinstated oh, right. it and we used to have monthly or, or two monthly retreats which we used to have about 60 or 80 people for these retreats that's a big retreat we used to have mm. mass there every week all oh, right and so we brought back the christianity and um, to to that site which was rather nice so this was down in market down in market right. but of course it's all gone now unfortunately oh it hasn't has that's, it yes but that's another story no, all right but coming back to our arrival there, and then, of course, I invested, I always investigate everything. Yeah. I had a lovely connection with Nelson, because, as you know, Nelson... Lord Nelson. 
It is. Admiral Lord Admiral Nelson. The Admiral oh, right. Lord Nelson. Yes, yes. And as a boy, mm -hmm. he learnt to sail on the river outside our house. Did he? Really? And he lived in... in um, uh, well, you see, what happened was he had, I can't remember, nine or ten brothers and mm, sisters, yes, and family. his mother died at an early age, mm. so he went to live with his uncle, mm. who lived at a place called Stoke Ferry, yes. or nearby to Stoke Ferry. Mm. Strangely enough, we then had a house. Yeah. <laughs> when we left, <laughs> after many years, we left Bridge Farm, we, went to, we bought a house in Stoke Ferry, ah. and strangely enough, Nelson had actually Lit visited uh, that yes. house. So it, it, was, it was quite amusing how the connections came. Amazing, yeah. You read the Foti theory, yeah. there's an answer to Crack almost on. everything in yeah. it. But coming back to the place, mm. uh, we had a, there was a, in these buildings, we restored them. Mm. We had a huge library and meeting room, and we did it all in very sort of old style. Mm. And uh, it was marvelously decorated because, as you know, there was the, um, what was the film in King's Lynn? There was. Um, all the, there was lots of armour in it, and I bought all the armour from oh, the filmmakers. Oh, Yes. Uh, and so we just, we, we... Yeah, I remember it. Sort sort of the Pilgrims, wasn't I it? I can't take off which yeah. it was. Mm. But we decorated all these buildings with this armour. Did you really? And it looked absolutely <laughs> stunning. It was really, very good. Yeah. And then I looked at it all, and of course, um, I thought, well, this is such a shame to see all of this. And of course, the Evergreen Christmas World, which we had at... Um, uh, hall. Norfolk Punch, yeah. Well Manor Hall, which when when we sold out to IDV in January, I think it was mm. 1991, mm. Uh, we had to cancel 90 coach loads for, you know, for the coming season. To come to what, the to Evergreen to Christmas? Ever Christmas? Evergreen Christmas, no, sorry, yes, to the Evergreen yeah. Christmas World. We had to cancel 90 coach My loads, giddy. so you can see how popular it was. Oh, yes. Now, IDV didn't want the Evergreen Christmas World, no. so no. I thought, well, what do I do with that? So I had these 17 buildings, so I put all the Evergreen Christmas World into these buildings, and of course I'd been collecting. I've never thrown anything away all my life. And this is, of course, because I was brought up in the war. Yes, you were. And um, mm. you had a feeling you never threw anything no, away. Make do in I think there were more hoarders <laughs> generated from the last war, the well, Second World War, yeah. than anything else, because yeah. you know you had to make everything do. Mm. And, and so I've collected, I had enormous collections. Oh, right. And, what um, sort of stuff? Well, it, right at the top of it was, of course, I'd been collecting Armstrong Siddeley cars. Were you really? And huh? uh, I had the, a big collection of Armstrong Siddeley cars, so I one of the buildings I made into a car museum. Oh, right. And we were the only Armstrong Siddeley car museum that was open to the public anywhere in the world. That's not in, the, uh, and yeah. we even had a Concorde engine. Did you now, really? you see, Concorde was made... The engine Bristol. was made, first of all, by Bristol Sidley, mm. you know, the Armstrong Sidley company. Yeah, yeah. And Rolls-Royce, because they had this con con contract mm. for Concorde, mm. wanted this engine for Concorde. Yeah. So they bought out the uh, ah, Bristol Sidley right. to get their hands on this engine. Ah, right. So I thought, well, it would be lovely to have one of these Concorde engines. Wouldn't it, yes. So I, I got in touch with the ministry. And yeah. I said, have you by any chance got a, a spare one? A, 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 a spare Concorde engine. <laughs> and you see, it's amazing what you if can you get don't just ask, you won't by get. asking. Yeah. You know, people only say yeah. no. no but no, absolutely. So I asked for a Concorde engine. And they said, well, go to Duxford and ask at yeah. Duxford. They've got a lot of our stuff there. Yeah, they, and they might have. So I got in touch with Duxford. Yeah. And I went over there one day. And they said, well, come into this building. And it was a huge, huge building. Right. And it was literally packed solid with, with vehicles, engines, machinery, what's it. We had to climb over, over the things, things to yeah. get through it, the building. And the man who talked me, he said, well, he said, I think we've got a Concorde engine over at that far side over there. So <laughs> we clambered over these tanks and bits and pieces and what's it. And we got to this end. And he said, that's the Concorde engine. And he said, it may not have ever flown. No. He said, it might be just a test engine. You don't know. No. I said, I don't care what no, it is. Just give me the um, engine. I'd like the engine. So then yeah. the next problem was, how do you get a, a, a oh, Concorde yeah. engine from Duxford, Duxford to you? So I suddenly had a brainwave. I thought, well, I'd ring, up, I, no, I'd ring up the RAF. Yeah. So I rang the Chopper RAF did. up, yeah. and they said, yes, no. I explained the situation to them. Yeah. I wanted it for the museum. They said, don't worry. We'll send the lorry with a dozen airmen, and we'll move it for you. So well, how once, generous. It was, indeed. Yeah. And so they went, they picked it up, and they brought it to, to me. But once it was installed in our museum, of yeah. course, I started to inv investiga investigate it, as, what, as you engine, do. The engine, yeah. The engine, a marvellous engine. Yeah. Yeah. And 
huge thing, you know, it's like this room yeah, practically yeah. length. And um, I got the number, and of mm. course I did some research, and do you know what I found? Mm. That was why it had been given to Duxford, presumably, or for, for the, to the ministry. Early prototype. It was the first, you see, the Concorde was developed in France, mm. and France had one Concorde, the and first have, one, yeah. and we had the other. Yeah. Now, the French were supposed to, um, now let me get it right, the French were the first ones to fly it, yeah. And the English were supposed to break the sound barrier. Take it up to Mach 2, yes. And as I say, I, but I traced this engine mm. and I found that it came from the very first French Concorde, ah. the one that flew first. Oh, lovely. So it's got an absolute wonderful history yeah. to it. And then, of course, uh, needless to say, we were late. We weren't ready to go through, be the first one to go through the sound barrier. Oh, right. So the French Concorde. Not only was the first Concorde to fly, but it was Mach the first two. to go through the sound barrier. So this engine, which I had there in yeah, my, little, the whole bit. my little museum, was actually a piece of history. Yeah, so I was delighted so. with that. We made a big feature of oh, it, just to yeah. say. I think it's, um, well, we'll t come to that as yeah. another story. I can tell where it is now. But at any rate, this, okay, the Armstrong Sydney Car Museum, we had a wonderful arrangement with the local travellers. I've always been great mm. friends of the travellers. Some lovely people amongst mm. the travellers. Mm. There's some bad ones. Yes, but they're, there they're, is. they're kept apart, but there's mm. some very good ones. And through the travellers, I had to, uh, built up a collection of horse-drawn vehicles. Oh, was, yes, they're nice lovely, aren't they? Because yeah. I have, as you may recall from earlier <laughs> once yeah. in my life, um, I actually used to... Uh, a, a farm with yes, horses yep. before tractors, so I had a great feeling for horses. Right, she's a teenager. And there's some wonderful, wonderful carriages and, oh, yeah. and pieces. Yeah. And we had every, everything under the sun. And uh, we had a, I found a big collection of telephones from Norwich. Oh, right. They were just about to close it down. And so you we arranged rescued it. We rescued it, so it came to us. We had everything under the sun right. in, in that. Sounds and, quite an eclectic And so I mix. thought, well, it seems a shame to have this building, all these buildings, all with my collections and all these bits right. and pieces. So I thought, well, perhaps I ought to open it to the public. Oh, right. And my wife wasn't very enthusiastic. Oh, she must have been. But what are you going to do next? Ag once again, <laughs> uh, to cut a long story short, um, we went from no visitors at all to 70,000 visitors a year. That's nearly as many as Felix still get. <laughs> is it really? Well. But, but anyway, it was packed, yeah, always probably packed. Is, actually. And of course, my, my, my um, peacocks. Uh, we, oh, you had well, those. We yes, had you the had two those. or three peacocks. Yeah. When we came there, of course, because peacocks make such a noise, oh. they annoy the neighbors yeah. dreadfully. You drive but, me buggy. But at uh, Hermitage Hall or uh, Bridge Farm, uh, we didn't have to worry about neighbours because we were completely on oh, our own. Oh, yes, and you had your own frontage. And um, so the peacocks, they they, they found themselves because they nest in trees. Yes. They fly up mm. to the top of trees to nest and, and go to sleep at night. Mm. And the most wonderful watchdogs, and we ended up with about 20, 20 peacocks there. These things do and breed, Eric. They know. do breed, Numbers yes. go up. But the peacocks... Um, if anybody came up the drive at night or yeah. anybody in the grounds, they'd set up such a kerfuffle, you wouldn't believe it. But the trouble was, they would do that at any noise. So oh, if you right. came out of the house at night, to Off go, all this noise would start. But yeah. the amazing thing was, I used to say to them, now stop it, it's only me. <laughs> and they stopped, just like that. Really? <laughs> you wouldn't think peacocks would. Yeah. But um, we had, we had uh, a breed of cows. Now, I can't remember what it was, but it was a very rare breed. Colour? I can't remember, it'll come back to yeah. me. But we started off, I think, with just a, a bull and a cow. I, oh bought, right. I bought a pair, mm. and that built up with calves and watsits until we had a nice little, uh, we ended up with about, I think, 10 or 15 of them. Oh, right. And uh, uh, they were wonderful. Of course, the, the bull, which we had, mm. it was a prize bull, I might add, mm. and um, we had him very young, but he grew up over the years, obviously. And he went and got himself into the river and in mud up to his neck. Oh dear! I can't believe it. I Near walked the down the river. The bow, I used yeah. to take the Irish Wolfhounds for a walk along the river bank, and there I saw him stuck in the mud. So I obviously fire, fire, I went and had to get service. I had to get the fire service yeah. in, and they did a marvellous job. I can't speak highly enough of the no. fire people. They no, got they do rush, yeah. 
they had to get a, a Land Rover or something, mm. and they pulled him out. It was quite remarkable. So you did you didn't do with the cows as you did with the lambs. They didn't end up being no, such no. a fatty product. Nobody no, they would. Se they seem to be more more. They seem sensible. to be more sensible. Cows cows can be lovely, but they delightful. They, yeah. And uh, in fact, when when ultimately we sold um, mm. out there, um, I sold the whole herd. As a, as a group, oh, because right. I didn't want them to be separated. Because no. you know, they, 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 it was lovely to see them, the calves growing up with the mothers, the and whole the whole lot. Yeah. See, it seemed yeah. growing as they used to be. You know, yes, in did. the wild. Now the okay. poor things. Well, as soon, caged as, soon, soon as a calf is born, it's taken away from its mother and ki ki killed for. You mm. know, I mean, it, it's we won't go there. We won't right. go there. No, no, it, 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 I, I think it's sort of very but industrialized. But that was known as collector's world. Oh, right. And as I say, it became one of the major, major attractions, tourist, in tourist that, attractions yeah. down in, Northern, market. in Northern, down the market. But um, uh, it was a wonderful site. And as I say, we uh, made a very strong relationship with the Swaffham School, girls' school. Oh, right. And the nuns there. Uh -huh. And they used to bring their girls over. Mm -hmm. And we used to have a lovely uh, annual procession there along the river bank. Oh, right. Which is yes. And it, it became quite a community in itself, yeah. which was Ideal. which was was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and was it on the ley line? It uh, well, I, b I believe it was. I think it was on the same ley line ah, right. as the other one, right. because they say once you've lived on a ley line, you always gravitate to a ley line, which is well. Which perhaps Stephen Rosenberg might have some, you know, insight and knowledge of of what is the healing power of ley lines, because. If, if whatever it, he, it is that he now does yes. originated at your hall as a result of yeah, some sort yeah. of Damascus conversion, yeah. we should find out, shouldn't yeah, we? Yeah. Another thing which is very mm. um, good for you, and people have let it die, mm. some people have, but some people haven't, which we did at Well Manor, I don't think I mentioned it, um, I used to, I learnt to ring the bells. You know, church what do you bells. Mean, sort of Actually, you know, pull, pull oh, the proper ones. Proper ones. Oh, yeah. a peal of bells. A peal, absolutely. So I, I, oh, right. That, that, that is very therapeutic. Campanology or Campanology, something? Campanology. That's, that's you, it, exactly. yeah. And you can go anywhere in the country, and if you hear bells ringing, you go they there. Are, they are they will welcome you with open arms. This is well, why I they. wanted to raise it. And they'll teach you to ring them. And right. it's a very therapeutic We must uh, take occupation. you to St. John's. A lady uh, gave a whole sum to put in bells at St. John's. You'd really? Love oh, really? Yes, you must really? go and have a look at Do those. they ring regularly? Yes, I think they do. They, do they sound they? grand across the seafront they? when they're God. ringing. Oh, yeah. I, I might have. I've got I'll, I'll check and let you know. Do it. Okay, we're, we're, we're back on track. Yes. yes. How are we off for time at the moment? Uh, we've got about another five or so. Are we all good? Mm. So, um, so bell ringing, I've forgot, forgotten about that at Well Manor. And when, so when I, because I developed a very keen interest in bells, and I suddenly heard that there was a church bell for sale. Really? A full-size church bell. I just bell, can't big, imagine the church one. getting rid of a bell. Well, I, don't, I no. suppose it was their last one, or oh, you or don't something. know, but I heard, oh, right. heard it. So I thought, well, there's only one thing I can <laughs> do. Get. I must buy that. <laughs> and so I built, bought this church bell. Right. And then I thought, what do I do with this church bell? So in, in next to we had a restaurant and everything there, you know, with the, the, oh, did the you? visitors. Oh, did you? Well but as, there was yeah. uh, when we rebuilt the chapel, I built a tower behind the chapel, in which we put the church bell. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so when I used to take the visitors round, I used to be able to give them a demonstration of bell ringing. Oh, because right. I, it actually yeah. I could set it all up so it actually rang. Love it. And uh, so it. They was, didn't have a go. Well, you can't really. Well, I was thinking, can, seeing them disappearing up into the. It can be dangerous, can, oh, can be dangerous if, if you yeah. don't know Power. what you're doing. Yeah. But uh, I can recommend it for anybody. Oh, right. If they hear the church bells ringing, find where they're ringing, go there, and they'll welcome you with open arms so and teach you to. It, it's bell. the physical and the, and the hearing. It was a it's, whole it's, experience. It's the whole experience. It's, it's a very or therapeutic or experience. And keeps and you fit, see, I and think. And it keeps you fit, and it seems to attract a nice sort of person as well. Yeah. In fact, at Well Manor, um, two or three of the bell ringers became part of our organisation. Oh, did they? And I was what, you recruited? There was, I recruited <laughs> them. We, we used to take um, coach loads round, you know, because we, right. we, we put in a two-foot gauge railway to take the visitors from the coach car park through to the Evergreen Christmas World. Yes, you did. And when we got there, we used to keep them in their coach loads and take them round as a Oh, right. about, I'm with you. I can't remember, between 30 and yeah. 50, I think yeah. it was. We used to take them round 
because it's guided tour. Yes. And one day our, our person for the guided tour uh, wasn't well or something, and, and this young girl, she was only 16 or 17, yes. who was a bell ringer, right. um, I said to her, well, look, I'm stuck, and nobody to take this tour round. Take them. So, so, and so I took her in. She'd yeah. been round herself with it. Yeah. I took her in, introduced her to the group, yeah. and started her off. And you know, she became one, Never of, our best, one of our best tour guides. Yeah. An <laughs> early start, early but, age. Yes, Give them a chance. But it is, yeah. yes. But we used to, to try and help various people mm. there. I think I told you about the uh, boy who would, nobody could find work for. He, he was a bit of low, low IQ. No. And um, uh, so we didn't know what to do with him. Mm. In fact, I, I, at one point, I said to him, look, people are complaining about you. If you do stand around doing nothing, at least have a broom in your hand. So you look as if you should be. <laughs> you look be. as though you yeah. should be doing something. Even if you just but lean on it. At any rate, it just yeah. shows you how everybody's got capabilities. Right. I got him in, I taught him to drive the engine. The oh, stick, did you? And he became the best train driver you have ever come across. He used to convey every instruction, every oh. safety instruction, and the pleasure that boy got from driving that train was unbelievable. It's perseverance, isn't it? It is. It really is. Now, before we end, because we are hitting that magic hour, this says Norfolk Punch, Yes. but it, it, it's not this punch, Oh no, is it? No, no, no. So what sort of punch that, that, is that? that? That, you've heard of a Suffolk Punch, Yes, I have. You see, Norfolk Punch was made in what they term a puncheon. A what? A puncheon. Is P that a P -U -N -C -H -E -O -N, container? C-H-E-O-N, which is an 80 or 90 gallon drum. Oh, big. Big, very big, big, big. big. That's what Norfolk Punch was made in, which is why it's called Norfolk Punch. Ah. And Suffolk Punch, which is a horse. Yes, indeed it a is. A very beautiful, big horse. Beautiful horse. They were as beautiful. big as a puncheon. Ah, oh, I see the you connection. See? So oh, that, that right. is the connection, and Lovely. that's where, where that comes from. So that's not a physical, that would do you no harm. It's purely a container. It's the, con that's the it? container it's made in. I love that. And uh, hopefully now people will be able to go and buy it. Well, in yes, let's hope they can. And it's coming back into England. I so think what, you, what, what you'll have to do is to... Um, mind you, we don't now have this unifying... Um, broadcasting organisation that reaches virtually everybody at the same time anymore, do we? It's sort of fragmented somewhat. It is so, a bit, yeah. yes. Well, it's because I, I wouldn't know what, which breakfast time programme you'd go on with a, a steaming, you know. <laughs> well, uh, in those days it was Radio Four. It was and magic. It, I can't remember the man's name. If I we could, should find out. Who uh, is. I can. If yeah. I said it, you'd remember it. But he used to, the whole. It used to be millions used to yeah. listen to him in the mornings. The home service. Home service. It was the home four, service. Uh, Radio yeah. Four was the home service, yeah. and uh, and I would I'll always remember. They said to me, "No, no, you don't, don't, uh, don't let him sample it because if he doesn't like it, he he'll say spit so. it all over his mouth." I said, "No, yeah. I want him to sample it." So <laughs> yes. I I heated it up and I went in there with a steaming cup of well, that's hot, what I was expecting Norfolk this morning. Punch. So I, I'm I'm a bit heartbroken. I am. No, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> and oh, well, we'll we will have, have to rectify we'll have this. To rectify that. Right, Eric, we've got to go. You've got to go. You've got to train to I've catch. I've got to train to catch. That's episode whatever it may be. Twenty-three and, and whatever.